You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. What is the greatest Christmas movie of all time? Today, we are releasing a special Christmas thing for you guys. It's something that we recorded live around a week ago with host Joe Day, Brandon Knight, and Dan Stoyer. And they just discussed some of their favorite Christmas movies and favorite Christmas traditions and just had a fun time talking Christmas stuff. So we hope you all have a Merry Christmas and enjoy this recorded live conversation. Remember, since they recorded it live, this is going to be a lot more raw than some of our other stuff, but I think it's a good time. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! That is a bit of a buzzkill. <laughs> aren't, aren't we all a little uh, disappointed that we're not <laughs> Spider-Man? What a way to start off a live stream. What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome to a special holiday edition of Systematic Ecology. Um, it's funny that you came in in a Santa hat as well, Dan, because I made a joke to my wife about an hour before we were going to go live. I'm like... Is it wrong to wear a Santa hat onto a Christian live stream? Is there, I feel like that might be wrong. And then next thing you know, we were running down to the dollar store to grab a Santa hat. So go there we figure. Go. There we go. <laughs> this one's comfortable though, so I don't mind wearing it. Nice. Yeah, I'm surprising. Yeah. This is surprisingly soft. I was expecting something that was not nearly as soft. <laughs> nice. So. All right, guys. Well, yeah, I uh, so so this was this was originally supposed to be some bonus content for y'all, but we decided to um, go ahead and turn this into a stream, um, you know, hang out like the last time we uh, may end up with some guests popping in uh, partway through. We shall see. Um, but so we so Brandon and I did an episode uh, centered around traditional Christmas movies. Like we're talking 50 yeah. plus years, the classics. So we wanted to um, kick this off by talking about some of those those classics, but but of a more modern age of okay. uh, of Christmas movies. Um, okay. I figure we'll all, we'll all just kind of go go around and and spitball. Um, I will go ahead and get us underway with. I would argue the goat of uh, Christmas movies, A Christmas Story. Yeah. Not- <laughs> <laughs> 90s Kids right. Rejoice. Of, that is right. <laughs> uh, TBS's 24-hour marathon every year. Nostalgia feels you will, in fact, shoot your eye out. But uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, you I, for me, you don't get out of having this conversation without talking about at least the first one. The second one, we don't talk about that. Yeah. That's kind of like the that's kind of like the sequel to Wizard of Oz. I say that, and most people are like, "Wait a minute, they made a sequel to the Wizard of Oz?" Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> True. What do y'all think? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. So that is actually. Not just like my favorite of the modern Christmas movies, but that is my favorite Christmas movie, period, uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, I think the I think the film is just simple, like it's so relatable. At one point in time, yeah. every child wanted that one toy that we we, we didn't know if we were going to get it. And we're trying every possible way to try and get it. And it right. finally happens. It's really simple. But the other reason why I love this movie is because. The film is shot in Cleveland, so everything you're seeing is Cleveland. But the story, A Christmas Story, it comes from a book called In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash by a guy named Gene Shepard. He was a radio personality and an author who grew up in Hammond, Indiana, which is where I'm from. And the story of Ralphie uh, are all these fictional retellings of his life story. So everything that you're seeing again in the movie is from Cleveland, but that elementary school where Flick sticks his tongue to the light post yeah. grew up two minutes away from it. I that would if I was if it wasn't for the fact that I was homeschooled, that actually would have been the elementary school I went to growing up. So that, that's so interesting. 
Yeah, it is so full of like hometown nostalgic vibes for me. Yeah, I, I, I that might be the, that might in fact be one of the um, few places that I could imagine. I, I used to live in Cleveland for a cup of coffee for about 18, <laughs> 20 months, something like that. I lived in Cleveland. And so I, there they they did it big there was there was appreciation for mm-hmm. that movie in that city so that might be one of the few places i would imagine would celebrate harder that movie yeah we do have uh in hammond every year it's called a christmas story comes home the indiana visitor center has like these big window displays of scenes from the movie one year right. uh, a couple of the actors and actresses from the film uh, came to sign autographs. I met the bully, Scott Farkas. His eyes are <laughs> yellow and terrifying. So, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you hit the you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's it's kind of like you know we talk about so many of these stories. And they all have these these different like these different stories have this same common denominator of it's an every man story it's an every kid story you know we the the big buzz right now is Spider Man Spider Man is the soup du jour right now and mm-hmm. like why is why is, can so many different countless generations resonate with this particular IP it's because this is an IP that it transcends a a person it's a concept it's a period it's a snapshot of a period of time for a lot of people, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you think, Dan? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get a lot of or are you, for this. Are I'm you the go. one guy who doesn't like that movie? Cause it's I'm a real a love it or hate it. I have not seen the whole movie at all. Like I, <laughs> like, yeah, this is how popular the movie is because I know there's a BB gun. I know the line, don't shoot your eye out kid. And I know okay. there's a leg lamp. And I know okay. in, in my grandparents' house, this that same leg lamp was in their neighbor's house. I'm like, look at that leg lamp. It's from a Christmas story, isn't it? But <laughs> we awesome. all have them in my hometown. We, there's this like everywhere in Northwest Indiana. Yeah. I have a Christmas ornament of the leg lamp. It's one of those things that just transcends the movie. It's so funny. Yeah, but it's just, I mean, it's a classic. I'm not going to deny that. I didn't know there was a second <laughs> one, just like I found out a couple of years ago that there's the Sandlot, which is a classic, but then there's the Sandlot 2 and then the Sandlot 3, which... Never seen. Oh, no. there's a third? I there's knew there was a second one. one. Yes, yeah, Squints oh. comes back and he becomes the manager of the team. I, that's, I, I, bought, I watched it one time and I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so many of those movies, and that's this is a this is an episode topic in and of itself. But there's so many of those movies that just have cash cow sequels that should have never been made. Yeah. You can't touch a classic sometimes, and you just gotta let it go. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Brandon, why don't you go ahead and go next? What is one of your uh, favorite modern Christmas movies? Well, outside of A Christmas Story, I would say another one of my favorite of the modern day classics is uh, Jingle All the Way with Schwarzenegger and Sin- and uh, Sinbad. We actually just watched it this you past Saturday. <laughs> we just watched it for the first time this past Saturday. With, uh, it's the first time my wife had seen it. I'd seen it a bazillion times. She she had never seen it before. And it was giving her like low intensity anxiety attacks to watch <laughs> like the trampling, the, the 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 bouncy balls all up in the air and them all jumping right. for it. She's just like cringing the whole time. It's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, yeah, that's one of those movies that yeah, like I, a Christmas story, they um it just has that that yearly nostalgic plays on repeat sort of thing just was on like i remember being on in on uh cable growing up oh, man. Mm. do you have a favorite line from that movie or part i got like, oh. oh man <laughs> uh i'm a we're all big fans of the scene when he gets to the toy shop for that very first time. And he's, I'm looking for a turbo man. And they all just start laughing and pointing at him. Like, you don't know what you're doing right now. I also, anytime Phil Hartman starts talking, the creepy neighbor guy who's hitting on Schwarzenegger's wife, anytime he talks, I just think it's funny. Just hearing his voice is hilarious. (laughs) 
Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah, he man. plays slime ball to absolute perfection. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And my wife's a big Star Wars fan. So as soon as little Anakin Skywalker shows up, she's, oh, he's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts, I did not know at all that, um, like, I never put it together that that was little Anakin Skywalker until, like, years later after watching it. And I, I was relative, I was on the younger side when sure. the when it first, uh, when Star Wars, when the first uh, episode one, I should say, uh, came out. So, like, it's not, like, it was a part of my, my, childhood and all of that kind of stuff but yeah i did not realize that that was actually uh that that was actually him little little pod racing anakin dan what's some of your uh dan what's some of your favorite scenes from that movie Uh, oh man where do i even begin i mean i think if i had to pick one my favorite scene is the second time sinbad pulls out a package saying it's a bomb (laughs) and they all get to leave and then the guy's like, I've been in the bomb squad for 10 years. And he rips it open. The bomb blows up. And Sinbad looks around like, this is, that was a real bomb. This is a sick world we live in with sick people. <laughs> <laughs> and he just <laughs> against me every time. The, the best part about this conversation, too, is that if someone watching this has never seen this movie, they have no idea what's going right. on. Right. The, con- <laughs> the context for that context is ridiculous. So easily. Yep. Yep. Between the three of them, all three of their style of humor, the fact that it's it's a mix of Sinbad just being all over the place and then the other two being more like deadpan and all mm-hmm. of that, like, oh, man, it's just hilarious. <laughs> That's a good one. OK, Dan, I took yours. So what's what's your backup? <laughs> Well, my backup, and I know my family's from New York, so I like pretty much any Christmas movie that has to do with New York. That's why I'm a big fan of Hawkeye right now. But okay. um, for me, anyways, it's Elf. I mean, it's dumb, okay. it's stupid, it's silly, but I think that's what I like about it. It's just it's just a fun little ride of doing little antics throughout the movie, and it kind of I don't know why it does, but it reminds me just of the way as a Christian we should have like a childlike heart after jesus like elf has a childlike heart going after santa and despite Mm -hmm. no one no matter what anybody says he still believes in him and the power of christmas spirit and all (laughs) all this really cheesy stuff so yeah i'm a big fan of elf for some reason nice as someone who absolutely loved still loves building lego sets seeing those like beautiful displays in the toy store oh, just get Pole. utterly destroyed i mean they're so <laughs> cool and then they get destroyed just like rips my heart out every time <laughs> that's so funny yeah i so i'm a person that i absolutely grew up hating the movie elf i thought that movie oh, yeah. <laughs> was just so very very bad and like i'm not gonna net like there's a there's a whole queue worth of movies that would that <laughs> that would be sooner on my my list but i can appreciate just the the innocent ridiculousness of it all like a light story that goes around just for the person who really digs on christmas just put that on and go for it. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. Like, absolutely. That's definitely a movie that I have come to at least in its, in what it represents. I can appreciate (laughs) all of that. It it doesn't help that I'm not like the biggest Will Ferrell fan. I I think he's, you know, a smidge bit, a lot overrated, like super (laughs) overrated. Most times. (laughs) But yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I also like that one scene in the movie where it's like, work's your favorite. No, smiling's my favorite. No, work is your favorite. <laughs> Be quiet now. Work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that sounds like real life. But yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> 
Continuing on this, I you know I gotta I gotta give another another shout out to one of those movies. You know we uh, we debated one of the movies of that that just is is debated whether or not it's a Christmas movie. But uh, this is one shout out to you, babe. This is what this is our our Christmas tradition. But Die Hard. Okay. Uh, so okay. So <laughs> this is one of those. Here. Right. I'm not one of those people that's like, change my mind. You know what I mean? I'm not one okay. of I'm not one of those types, but like for real and for true, Die Hard is a, mo- is a Christmas movie. Fight me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's it is a man saving the day I, for Christmas. You know what I mean? Like, How much more Christmas movie short of him wearing a Santa hat do you want to get? You know what I mean? That's awesome. I uh I've only ever seen Die Hard once. It was one of those things where I'm like, I know I should watch this and I should just do it. And my roommate in college had all of them, except for the most recent. The was it? The fifth one or whatever. Um, whatever. Uh, and they're good. I really like that fourth one, though, where he's kind of older. It came out in like 2008. I was in middle school or something. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I could really fight on if it's a Christmas movie or not. Same with Gremlins. Like, if you want to watch Gremlins at Christmas, like, go for it. Whatever. (laughs) That's funny. So I never knew until you said that on um, in the episode that we recorded. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that there was a debate as to whether or not um, Gremlins was a Christmas movie. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. And I was never really a big Gremlins fan. So, you know, that kind of surprises me. You, for some reason, you seem like a Gremlins person. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just never really got into it. But but yeah, that's one of those. And and so so quick story for you all, because part of this is for you guys to get to know a different side of, of us. So so quick side note. I so Christmas. Two years ago, uh, no, three years ago. I'm so bad with memory with memories. Traumatic brain injuries are terrible for trying to recall dates. Three years ago on on Christmas, I proposed to my wife and then we watched Die Hard. So like and I had never really seen I had never seen the full the the full thing. So we watched it for the first time together. So yeah, it's one of those holds cool. a special place. And it's just I remember when I was a 14 year old boy and all of the guns and explosion and action and all of those kinds of things. So my 14 year old boy heart was like <laughs> over the moon watching this movie. That's awesome. <laughs> and you just got engaged, which like adds on to it. So yeah, totally. absolutely. So what about you, Brandon? Next up. Uh, I, I don't know if I could already call it a classic or not because we just watched it. It came out very recently. We watched it for the first time last year. I think it's a Netflix exclusive called Klaus. K-L-A-U-S. Uh, oh, Klaus. Have I you heard, I've heard of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the animation is very unique. It's not like Into the Spider-Verse, but it's along those lines of, oh, this is very different. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the story is essentially a remake of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. You've got the guy who's like a post mail worker and he or a post post office delivery guy. And he's in this like small town and that's all like icy and cold. And he meets the guy who's basically Santa Claus there, Klaus. And it's just this really heartwarming Christmas cartoon story. Uh, it got snubbed at the Oscars. It was nominated for best animated picture which when it was nominated i hadn't seen it i didn't really know anything about it that was the year that toy story 4 won best Uh, animated picture uh, and having seen klaus like they totally should have deserved that better story the animation is so much cooler pixar is just in the academy's back pocket i guess i don't know so check that one out like i said it's a newer one check it out (laughs) yeah i I can always appreciate something that is visually gorgeous. Like yes. it, when it comes to like animation and things like that, it might not be the thing, like the thing that I would pick up and watch, you know, at a, at a regular interval, but I can appreciate something that is, that is very like 
eye appealingly different. And I think that's that's a great way to say it is it's like it's like into the spider verse, but only in so far as this is something that this is something different than what yes. I'm used to animated wise. Yeah. And that's honestly, cool. if you've never seen it, don't go out of your way to watch uh, to watch Toy Story for they should have stopped with the first one, maybe <laughs> the second one. But the first one, come on again. It's one of those movies. You cannot catch lightning twice. True. I think the second one is great. The third one is fine. But we get to the fourth yeah. one and I'm like, why are we here? Why are we yeah. doing this? I mean, I know money, money, yeah. but oh, right. like, come on, give me a good story. Anyway, we can bash them another time. We could do a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Dan? Oh, man, if I have to pick another one, the one I always watched as a kid growing up, it'd be the Santa Claus. Oh, with, uh, yes. Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Yeah, I mean, it's, such a classic um although looking back at it now i mean he became santa claus by killing or accidentally <laughs> <laughs> killing the other santa and then just hopping in the sleigh come on dad we can you never listen right. to anything i say I, mean, I, well, I was a big fan of the kid but i mean i just loved the idea behind it and it was just a lot of fun watching it and how we I, I just love how he like shaved his beard and then he got the beard back and they mm -hmm. think he's going crazy and they want to lose his yeah. rights to being a dad. And <laughs> it's actually a really yeah. dark movie when you it start is. stripping away a lot of the Christmassy stuff. Like it's a really heavy film. But when you're watching this as a kid, it's just like, oh, so that's how you become Santa Claus. I just got to knock the guy off my roof. Awesome. Oh, right. <laughs> We're too busy with all of the, the twinkly lights and the magic of it all and all of that to realize that like, okay, so um, murder, divorce, um, you know what I mean? Loses right. his job. Loses, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. But like uh, so many, that's another one of those movies that like, there's just so many quotable lines to it i shave in the morning in the afternoon i look like this you know what i mean <laughs> Joe and yeah I that's we pulled that off too <laughs> yeah. right and then he's in the job meeting and i'll just have something small and then he orders half the menu with like mm. a double side order of everything else and then he doesn't blame on the fact that he's it's not because i'm eating a lot <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like a bee stung by a bee yeah, calvin by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a really big bee <laughs> And what's crazy is, of course, there's a second one and a third one. And the second one's a lot of fun. But, I mean, it, I've, I was kind of calling them out saying that he had to get married as part of the clause. I'm like, you think they would notice that on the card the first time around? Because they like the huge magnifying glass on it. And then the third one right. is just a weird... I've never seen the third one. Weird thing. I like Martin Short, and I've, I've never seen the third one. I just, I did not care by that point. Yeah, me too. I'm a I am a particularly big uh, Martin Short fan. I think yeah. he is so much of his stuff is really, really hilarious. Um, but like I'm for me, a lot of these movies that we're talking about came out when I was a kid. Like I have very mm. distinct memories of right. watching Santa Claus in theaters when it came out sort of thing. Whoa. So like by the time it got to the third one, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> this isn't it. Ha hashtag not my Santa Claus. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> Too many clauses. Yeah, absolutely. But um, so another one that I absolutely felt the need to to mention is uh, Home Alone. OK, Home, Home yeah. Alone is just it's it's so good. And like you realize that, like, just the things that are happening on the screen, it's like a Santa Claus where like there's a reason why there's fan theories out there that Carl mm -hmm. uh, was Kyle McAllister, the kid, the kid's first name in the movie. Kyle, yeah. yeah Kyle, uh, he Kevin. Uh, grows Kevin, Kevin, Kevin oh, right. uh, grows up to become uh, Jigsaw from the Saw movies. Like, <laughs> I've never heard that. Are you kidding me? I've never heard that. I learned one. something new today. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I watch too many horror movies. But yeah, no, <laughs> ah, there's a jigsaw. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole fan theory that <laughs> wow. that Kevin becomes jigsaw because, like, you think about it, these elaborate booby traps that, like, 
he lights somebody's head on fire at one point <laughs> in time. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but yet because of all of the ridiculous slapstick comedy in it, it's just too, you know what I mean? It's too good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just watched on Netflix the episode of the movies that made us. Have any, either one of you guys watched those on Netflix? They're like little uh, documentary. No. They're little documentary episodes, thirty minutes oh. long or so, of a lot of eighties, nineties films. And we watched the one on uh, on Home Alone. It was really interesting just hearing how it all came together. That's basically what it, those episodes are about: is how the movie goes from script to film and how it goes over. Chris Columbus and John Hughes working together. It was supposed to be a Warner Brothers film, but they pulled the plug because it was going to cost too much money. And Fox picked it right up because John Hughes was doing some like shady deal work behind the scenes. Like it was it was pretty interesting. Yeah, that's there's so many of those weird of those weird stories behind like you look at the you look at the movie and it's like I mean I say innocent, but like innocent in the sense that it's one of those movies that for for people of a certain generation you mention and like the warm and fuzzies come in, like the kid and it's funny and it's slapstick and all of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. But then like it's, it tends to be those kinds of movies that have the most absolutely ridiculous backstories to them. Right. That's true. True. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Brent. I, uh, I was gonna say I think for my uh, third pick, I'm I was gonna say Home Alone because I was surprised we got this far without saying Home Alone. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Scrooged, Scrooged with Bill Murray. Yes, because that is my favorite of all the Christmas carols. Uh, Joe, I think we've talked about this a little bit. It may have been on the classic uh, Christmas movie episode that. Uh, that final scene with Bill Murray and he's doing the big spiel. He's when it's finally clicks of like, I get it. I know what Christmas is about. And he's fine. He's going through the big spiel. Like that is the best Bill Murray acting ever. And there's yeah. just so many, there's so many great, there's so many great lines and there's subtle jokes in the background too. I love those type of, I love that type of humor where you kind of have to stop and observe everything to see what's going on. Like when he's in his office, his last name is cross. And when he's in his office, if you notice painted on the wall is supposed to be the definition of cross. And it says something you nail people to. Like, oh man. <laughs> but it's just like that type of humor and that like, that Bill Murray dry sarcasm is so, yeah, I just love it. And yeah. I think all of his brothers are in it too, which is cool for a Christmas movie. That is cool. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's one of those, again, like growing up there, you know, there were some movies that were just, and I was a huge, one of my big geekdoms is movies and like what is now considered the quote unquote nineties um uh er, like era movies but like the 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 nineties collection sort of thing. Like right. because growing up that was that was my childhood. You know what I mean? So yeah. for like things like Groundhog Day and Scrooged <laughs> and things like that. There's a short list of Christmas movies because I am officially like, okay, so Confession Time with the Saints. I am officially this year the annoying Christmas guy in my house. Wow. I never thought I would see the day <laughs> that I would be the one that's like, let's do Christmas stuff and listen to Christmas stuff <laughs> and all of that. But like, no, credit to credit to my wife. She's she's coming along too. But I I've, I've tried to I've tried to consolidate the Christmas movies. To like the greatest hits. Like if we're gonna okay. if we're gonna do this, let's let's go ahead and and so we I was considering because you know, like we talked about in the the classics episode, a Christmas Carol to me is just so timeless in all of its storytelling and things like that. And mm-hmm. like I came to that with the with that appreciation, like we talked about with that 1930s version of mm-hmm. like you're basically watching a theater performance but this is what a movie was at this point in time was basically just a recorded theater performance and all of that and so like i really had appreciation for that and then like that layer of just bill murray chewing the paint off the walls just just (laughs) acting with every ounce of his soul ridiculously was Mm -hmm. just 
Uh, ch- chef's kiss as far as that that kind of <laughs> like as far as a version of that movie. We, my brother Bradley and I, we crack up every time. We've seen this movie hundreds of times. We crack up every time when it's the last the ghost of christmas future the grim reaper and he's in the casket you know either like cremating him and then the elevator doors open and he's back and he's i'm alive and it's the hallelujah chorus starts playing <laughs> gets me every time yep. and then the guy yep. shows up with the shotgun so <laughs> nice. oh man is that one that uh that you've ever seen dan uh, I haven't seen that one, but for me, I agree. Christmas Carol is such a timeless story. It's been done no. so many times. I mean, I've seen ones from the 20s Whoa. that yeah. I actually like. But if I have to share two of them that really stuck with me, um, one was, I think it was in the late 70s, I want to say, yeah, 1979. It was where Henry Winkler was Scrooge, and it was called An American Christmas Carol. Oh, interesting. Know that. So okay. it was taking that story and actually putting it in the American culture. So he okay. works under like a Fezziwig guy. Like I can't remember all the names in the story because they're all different. Sure. Um, to modernize it. But he basically. Joe is frantically looking this up now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm making a note for myself to look this movie up. <laughs> so basically, he works at like a furniture shop and they try to like oh. create woodwork furniture from scratch. And he's like, why can't we do the assembly line or like putting like this? And he's like, Americans will never want that. And like by the end of the Christmas past part of the story, he, um, yeah, by the end of the Christmas past, he basically takes over that company and basically becomes the rich guy and forces the other guy okay. to get out of business. And then it goes <laughs> along the same path, just to, modern day version of it and it's just it's it's a trip <laughs> it's, it's it's a, a trip. wild wild trip just like uh, another scrooge i like is actually from 1970 it's called scrooge but it's it's called it, the main actor was albert finney and it's a musical so it's really okay. cheesy but at the same time it's really dark at the same time because after he sees his grave on the uh, future he actually goes to hell and they show it Huh. I was like, what oh. is going what is going on here? And like Marley shows up again and says, I knew you would not listen to me. Just follow me to your quarter. And he, wow. and Lucifer is so proud of how you dude that he's gonna tr- that he's gonna treat you the same way you treated Bob Cratchit. So he basically puts him in like a room that's an ice box with rats and ties him up with a chain and says what? You'll be the only person in hell that's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It is so- the first time I saw that, I'm like, man, this is dark. <laughs> Dan, every time we do an episode together, you bring up like the weirdest movies. And I'm like, these can't be real movies. That is intense. <laughs> it is. And I watched this when I was like 11, 12 years old. And <laughs> everybody gives me guff me. for watching stuff like Nightmare on Elm Street. Dan's <laughs> over here watching this. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, there's that, and there's also in the Christmas future part, like they sing a song that says "Thank you very much," and it's ba- they're basically at Scrooge's headquarters, and Scrooge is like, "I didn't know all these people loved me. This is so great," and he's like, and they can't see him, of course, because it's the dream, and he's looking that way, and they come out with the coffin, and he never sees it, and that's why they're cheering is because he's dead, <laughs> and the whole town's celebrating. I'm like, wow, this is that's intense. wow because the other movies don't really portray like how bad like he was like the fact that he died yeah. and people are like having a party and celebrating about it I, it yeah. does come up very briefly in the muppets christmas carol we just watched that one recently <laughs> when they get to the uh i almost said days of future past when they get to the christmas future part um the the pigs like that are supposed to be like his investment people yeah they're all talking about how they're only gonna go if there's lunch and they're glad he's gone and all that but man that is intense and it's also called scrooged that one's called uh, scrooge called or something scrooge. like that yeah okay scrooge from 1970 albert finney albert finney okay i've heard albert of that finney yeah yeah, I think my uh, I think my love for Scrooge also is benefited from. So I I was a kid when Muppet Christmas Carol came out. I would have been literally the target audience for it. I, none of the Muppet movies landed for me. Oh. Like I just was never really a fan 
of those versions. But okay. um, you mentioned uh, American uh, American Christmas Carol. Okay, so Henry Winkler is low key one of my guilty pleasure actors since I've Same been an here. adult. You know what I mean? Like I watched Happy Days on reruns, like on it was okay. on syndication by the time I was a yeah. kid and all that. And mm-hmm. so like I had seen the Fonz before, but like I that he ever since I've gotten older and the things that I have seen him in, and it helps that I really lo- like every time that I've heard an interview from him, he's just like the lovable grandfather that you wish he had sure. sort of yeah. thing. Like, it, but like he just is such a ridiculously talented actor that to see him in something like this, like him playing Scrooge, I'm mm-hmm. absolutely going to be watching that. This awesome. <laughs> you have to tell me what you cool. think about it. Yeah, it's cool. So what uh, so so for me, though, you know, I, one of the one of the last ones I want to I want to mention here um, is it's it's, you know, when you think of Christmas, you think of these movies that you just you visualize and you don't really like you know about the movie, even if you've never seen the movie. And for me, a big one that for so many years people talked people talked about was National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So so many okay. people would talk about this movie <clears throat> and like I I knew about like the big Christmas light and the porta potty thing and mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff like I but I had only seen it maybe 5 years ago for the first time. And I'll tell you what, I did not stop laughing from start to finish of that movie. It was just so <laughs> ridiculous in all of its glory. So I love Chevy Chase. A lot of yeah. my sense of humor comes from watching the three amigos way too many times um (laughs) that's awesome but for some reason i don't know maybe i've only seen christmas vacation once and i don't know if i was just not in the mood for it or what but that i that is the skippable christmas movie for me maybe i just need to go give it another try but for whatever reason it, it like these things would come up and i'm like cool Julia Louis Dreyfus is there. Cool. There's other things going on. Cool. I just I, I must have just not been in the mood for it when I watched it. Yeah, it's something I've never seen either. So I have to check that out. Okay. Myself as well. Yeah, that's so that's a movie. I'll warn you both. Watch it with somebody who will appreciate the humor because it is very much <laughs> like a like a party movie. Like it's it's something oh, sure. that if you're around friends or family or something like that, it's it's one that does much better with a room full of laugh track. Like people like okay. la- like laughing along with it and it's like sure. the you know, the whole experience and all that kind of stuff. Watching it by mm-hmm. yourself, I could see how that is one that's just kind of Meh, this is a 80s okay. Christmas movie and an 80s comedy and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you've if you're a fan of movies like The Blues Brothers or Animal House or movies like that, definitely give it a, at least give it a shot cuz it's there's a lot of really situational humor. I grew <laughs> up for me a lot of that that comedic upbringing was Three Stooges. So everything that's like physical comedy like that, I really resonate with. So okay. Chevy Chase in that movie being as physical as he was mm-hmm. with the comedy with like the lights and getting shocked and this and that, like mm-hmm. just hilarious. <laughs> Chevy but. Chase has falling the act of falling to an art form yes. in a lot of his movies. It's like he could do stunt like a class on how to fall. And I would take that class. I think for my I think for my final pick of the modern Christmas films, I would say Ron Howard's uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Okay, I do prefer the animated one over this one. That one has more of the classic Christmas vibe to it for me. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) But I was actually not allowed to watch the, the Ron Howard version growing up. It creeped out my younger brothers jim carrey 
the appearance of Jim Carrey creeped out my younger brothers. And also my mom was not the biggest Jim Carrey fan growing up. So we, it was a very long time before I saw like Ace Ventura or Dumb and Dumber or any of those movies. But when I first watched uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, we were married and putting up our Christmas tree. And I just sat back and Cindy Lou Who starts singing, Where Are You Christmas? And I didn't even know that's where that song came from. I was like, oh, oh, this is actually very significant. Like, good for you. You you have a Christmas classic. You brought a new Christmas classic into existence with this film. And we all know that the scene when he's yelling into the echo, you're an idiot. I'm an idiot. (laughs) Like, and all that. (laughs) Bills, bills, jury duty, jury duty. Like, all of that. That whole scene is the funniest thing in the world. Right. Yeah, I mean, I feel so, like that's a movie that just won't die. Like, I mean, they just yeah. had a cartoon one, too, with the Grinch, I think, a couple years right. ago. Yeah. And, of course, the classic, the cartoon classic from, what, the 50s or the 60s, whenever it was. I mean, yeah. it's, I still love watching it every year. Yeah. we t- Brendan and I talked about the the original when okay. for the, the classics. And I'd mentioned on there that... I remember going to the theater with my dad to go watch this because we were huge. I was huge, huge Grinch fan. Like the, I really, really loved that, that, um, that cartoon, but we went, I remember us going and going and seeing it. And like, it so didn't hit with us because it just, just because it wasn't the animated one because sure. they didn't do the song in the same way because <laughs> of like, just honestly, it's biggest sin was that it wasn't the, um, the, the animated one, yeah. but that scene where he yells off into the cavern and I'm like <laughs> young watching this. I'm like, Oh, it was too, too funny. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Love it. But how Dan, about, how you, about you? Yeah. Oh man. If I got to say one more, all the good ones were already taken. So this one's more of a guilty pleasure for me. It's called It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. It was my one of my mom's favorite movies, so I grew up watching it. Um, it's a Hallmark movie. So okay. a lot all of them are like really, really, you know, dumb, cheesy. This one I can actually tolerate because just like American Christmas Carol, Henry Winkler's in it. Okay. And he is easily the go. best part of the movie and the dynamic he has with the characters is great. Like he was talking to, he was an uncle in the movie. The niece was the love interest of like the main character. And he's like, um, and he, she was dating a guy, of course, that was a jerk and wasn't good for her. And he goes, um, why do you like this guy? I mean, he's, he's an idiot. And she's like, well, he's sturdy. He's nice. He's, he's sturdy. And then he, he replies with the line, um, wow, he sounds like a bookcase. <laughs> that line gets me every year. I showed Sounds it to my like wife bunch. last year, and she was laughing for at least three minutes when she heard that line. <laughs> that never funny. gets old. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, systematic I, ecology is officially the Henry Winkler fan club. Moving <laughs> at on. Least for me and Joe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can What can you take from this? We're all big Henry, Henry Winkler fans. <laughs> so i wanted to you know I, I wanted to talk about we I, I feel like everybody has their their christmas traditions it's one of those holidays that just like whether it's a familial thing you know something you something you grew up doing that kind of thing but like okay. it is not the holiday season without without this and i'll go ahead and kick us off um i when i was exiting high school and entering into college I got super into Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Like, Love them. You know, aside, aside from all of the movies, the movies are, are, are definitely like, even at my, my absolute scroogiest atheist point that I had in my life, those movies were still like nostalgia feels and all of that kind of stuff. But like outside of that, you know, TSO, I had a, a streak going for a couple of years right after I got to, uh, or I, I was introduced to them, where I, um, I, uh, 
would see them every single year and like and they're a show if you've never seen them live okay. like the, it's it is an experience yes. when you go there outside of just the, the music like mm-hmm. the light show all of that kind of stuff like they put on a full on performance and i think that kind of helped bo- bolster the love that i had for them because i had gotten a chance to see them so many times actually my wife and i's one of my wife and i's first dates in um high school was going out to go see tso and cool. yeah it was so you know for me even you know at the at the worst it helps that i am um a musician and so just the musical intricacies that were in like that are involved in their shows just are so ridiculous that like it bore it it bore in me this love of classical rock Mm. of like that style of music and there are a couple of there's not too many like super notable bands doing it but like there are a couple of bands and orchestras that are out there that just if if that's your if that's your thing like if you like that the music without lyrics and just really really stellar instrumentals and things like that with a hard edge to it definitely check out check that that style of music out but yeah so fun facts there our area has a TSO tribute band called 1224 and they cool. they perform on to 1224 and so like i was i i had um become friends with some of the some of the my sister actually grew up with one of the the members but yeah like that was that was how into tso i was there for a minute that's nice. really cool nice. that's really cool yeah for me i would say a more recent tradition that has come for my life is christmas date so the First year that my wife and I were dating, we had been dating for like three months or so, and she was in school online and her classes were not going to end until like December 22nd, December 21st. It was going to be right up against Christmas. And we had this conversation at one point. She was like, I I know Christmas is more than the movies and the lights and the blah, 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 but I haven't gotten any of that this month. It's been studying and work and tests and quizzes. I just, I just don't feel very Christmassy, that Christmas spirit thing. So I wanting to be the world's greatest boyfriend planned this date right after her classes ended. It was this all day, just Christmas packed day of stuff to do. And it was great. And we had a really good time. Uh, Joe, similar to you with Die Hard. That was the first time that my wife and I went to the movies together. And we saw Rogue One, and that oh, has nice. become one of our favorite Star Wars films, more on the upper t- side if we were to rank them out for both nice. of us. What is cool about this tradition is that ever since then, it has continued. We went on it last Saturday, was our yearly Christmas date. And we have like things that we do every year on Christmas date, but it fluctuates a little bit. For example, every year we end up having dinner at a Mexican restaurant. And it's been a different Mexican <laughs> restaurant every year, but it's it's always Mexican food. And we always go to some place and get like hot chocolate or a peppermint mocha or something and then nice. go look at Christmas lights. And we always go to different areas and we always watch a movie at the end of the night. So it's a lot of fun. It helps bring those Christmas those Christmas spirit vibes to us, but also makes us feel nostalgic for when we were an itty bitty boyfriend and girlfriend dating each other. So <laughs> that's funny. That's cool. That's, How about that's you, Dan? awesome. Um, for me, whenever I share this one, I always get a bunch of eyebrows because it's unique. I guess just like me, it's something my grandpa started. So before you, before we open gifts, we'd gather around the TV and watch the beginning of Ben Hur, which is from the 1959 version, not the 2016 version, because the 1959 version actually starts with the nativity. Okay. So a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, the like first 10 minutes is just like the shepherds coming, seeing Jesus being born, having the star go above. And hmm. for the time, it's really, really cool. And then, of course, we sing Jingle Bells, read the Christmas story, and then line up in order of when we were born. 
So <laughs> as I got older, it was I got getting further back in the line, and I'm like, you know what? It's <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> it was really fun and just. Looking at Ben Hur, of course, every year I would yell after the nativity was done. I would say, "Can we put on the chariot race now? Let's put on the good part <laughs> of Ben." I want to watch Charlton Heston ride a chariot. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and then, fun fact, just about that movie, Ben Hur, is that the budget for the movie was fifteen million, about, and the box office got one hundred forty-seven million. And the film that was made in twenty sixteen, the remake, Ben Hur, the budget was a hundred million, and the box office only got ninety-four million. So <laughs> that just blew my mind seeing those numbers wow. and how something from a long time ago just destroyed. Even though right. we got better effects and CGI and sure, which can be overused sometimes, but still interesting. So two things: one that it goes to show you how popular that movie is. I had no idea. Like you saying that was the first time that I had ever heard that they remade Ben Hur. Like what a oh. random, random movie. <laughs> It to, was to just okay. Like it, who? Somebody had too much money on their hands and decided to do something about it. Yeah. Um, it, but uh, that whole your whole response, Dan, I want to say is probably the most Dan answer that you could have <laughs> absolutely given. Like, <laughs> yeah. There is something totally unsurprising about <laughs> everything you just said. And I love it how it's just the first part. We're not going to watch the whole rest of the movie. We're not even going to put on like a traditional Christmas movie. We're just going to watch the first, whatever it is, five minutes, ten minutes of Ben-Hur. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to imagine, like you said, that's a, you know, especially for its time, you know, there's not a lot in the way of like depictions like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In that same kind of way. So like, if you know that you can find a thing at a particular place, I can see the logic behind it. Oh yeah. Super random, but yeah, it is (laughs) random. I like getting the looks from it when I say it, but yeah, it was totally from my grandpa and he passed away. I don't know, like five, about five years ago. So, okay. So, I mean, I still something, it's something we stopped doing a little bit because it was with the extended family, but I think I might bring it up again this year and sure. be like hey well we're not watching the whole movie though even though i mean it's five hours about so i'm not <laughs> all gonna of watch those the whole Charlton movie Heston. but i might skip forward to the chariot race myself and like all right you do see some people die <laughs> right that can be your twist on the tr- on the christmas tradition watch the first five minutes then the chariot race That's right. but nothing in between <laughs> agreed that's great oh man so brandon Yep. You want to go ahead, you know, you do such a you do such a good good job of of you. you know te- teeing me up. We we get to come together and we have this common this common shared belief system that unites us. And yes, it is, you know, we talk about geekdoms and we laugh and it's a good time, absolutely. Yeah. But like we get to focus on the most beautiful thing to ever happen to mankind during mm-hmm. this time, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, so I want to go back to a Christmas story for a second, because again, I love it. And again, one of the reasons why I love a Christmas story is because it's, it's simple. It's simple. Yeah. Ralphie wants a BB yeah. gun. The end. That's it. That's all it is. And That's I all think it is. it's, it's yeah. a little. No, for real. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, the, really it's it. the story of a small child that wants that gift that keeps getting told you're going to shoot you your shoot eye your out, eye kid. Out. Yep. And then like, spoilers, the- <laughs> he gets the gun. <laughs> he gets the gun. And you know what happens? He, he almost shoots his, shoots his eye, eye out. He oh, almost, almost shoots, shoots his, his eye out. <laughs> but. Yeah, you know, the movie, it has its quirky moments like Flick sticking his tongue to the light post and some other just like the Santa yeah. Claus scene with the, you know, they're like horribly obnoxious elves. But the movie itself is very simple. And I always love the. it's in it's like one of the last scenes, like within the last two minutes. It's Christmas evening. Ralphie and his brother, Randy, they're both in bed. He's got his BB gun. Randy's got, I think it was a blimp, was like the big, like a toy blimp. He is what he wanted. The house is dark. There's this beautiful glow off of the Christmas tree. And I think like Silent Night is playing in the background. And the parents are just kind of sitting on the couch and they're looking out their big front window. And it's just those big, you know, that picture perfect giant 
snowflakes are falling. And it's just a very peaceful, calm, final scene. There is beauty in simplicity is what I'm going for here. And when it comes to the Christmas story of Jesus, the Christmas story, it is a beautifully simple story. Obviously, it gets complicated at times. We're all theologians here. We could go for days on the whole dual nature, fully God, fully man aspect of Jesus. But the story itself is very simple. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It's a very simple story. And I think there's beauty in that. I'm a traveling preacher. It's one of my like part-time ministry gigs alongside with podcasting and so i've preached a handful of christmas sermons and i'm sure you know we got a couple pastors on the hosting rotation here i'm sure there's pastors watching this or listening to this and there's this almost temptation to try and make the christmas the christmas story more appealing different there's always a hook you know because the story doesn't change but you have to talk about it every year so you know you have to present it a little you know we're gonna wrap it up in a different package this year but it's the same story and i really think this is a message i work in retail that's like my full-time vocation so for me getting into the christmasy spirit doesn't happen really until i clock out on christmas eve like it's just rough and it's been rough these past this past week, especially. Mm-hmm. And the message I have been preaching to myself is the message I think a lot of people need to hear right now that Christmas is simple. The Christmas message is a simple story of hope and peace and joy coming to us in a manger. You know what I mean? Like it and in a world right now where, you know, covid stuff is ever changing the rules are always changing and fluctuating we've got people that for the past two years have not been taking care of themselves with their mental health they've just been draining themselves in netflix and tiktok and listening to podcasts keep listening to our show but they have not taken care of their actual like emotional spiritual needs just been drowning out with the noise i think what we really need right now is the very simple Linus on the stage looking down the camera for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. What do you guys got on that? Okay. So first off, not to break kayfabe or anything, but you have outdone yourself with a different kind of, you went, you went with, (laughs) you went with Charlie Brown first. And I didn't realize that you were going to be able to one up yourself with using Christmas story (laughs) as the hook, bro. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so i'm getting more used to this i'm settling in more on this type of stuff <laughs> right so honestly like okay we we came into two like a little over two years ago and all the nonsense and all of the the drama and all of the everything everything right none of us the thing that doesn't get talked about is none of us came into there at 100 percent it's not just the baggage from the last two years yeah. that we're contending with. It is all of the baggage that we walked into 2020 with. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. And with and and to take it back to the movie, there's chaos and there's things and Ralphie mm-hmm. almost shoots his eye out. And there's so <laughs> much stuff going on in this movie mm-hmm. surrounded by this one picturesque scene where the camera pans out. All is quiet. You know what I mean? Like every everything is peaceful. Everybody mm-hmm. got what they wanted. And like in a way, we all get what we wanted in that regard. We can have peace. That is the story. Yeah. Like you said, Charlie Brown, Linus staring down the staring down the camera. Like with with everything else going on and all of the chaos that that life brings into this time like and and trust me i am the type of person i hated christmas i hated it growing up because it wasn't anything other than an excuse for drinking and drugs and chaos and wounds that was what i was was affiliated with there was no there was no love there was no peace there was no hope there was nothing none none of that 
And I remember looking at my uncle and saying, I don't, I hate Christmas. I will always hate Christmas. No, you won't always hate Christmas. You, you'll, you'll hate it until you can create new memories. Hmm. And between having my come to Jesus moment and, and developing that relationship and over the last several years since having that come to Jesus moment, developing hmm. that relationship and yeah. coming to really and fully understand what we celebrate Regardless, and you can, everybody can, it's not, he wasn't really born that this and that, whatever. It's the day that we choose to set aside yeah. to celebrate that fact. End of story. <laughs> right. And so yeah. on top of that, being able to build new memories with my wife and things mm -hmm. like that, we get, we get to, we get to rejoice about a thing that should make you jump up out of your seat. And, yeah. But at the same token, in all of it, in all of the chaos and nonsense and noise and stuff, and trust me, like coming into this as part of the mental health community mm -hmm. is a, a whole different ball of wax when it comes to all of the spinning plates that just naturally crop up as a byproduct of this time, let alone every other thing that can sure. take that to be able to focus and just stop and mm -hmm. just focus on the birth of the savior. Yes, yeah. we can get into the this is and the that's and all of that sure. kind of stuff. But when you strip it away, what you have is the most beautiful thing to ever be introduced into a broken world. And that is hope, my friends. Yeah. That is peace. That is love. Yeah. The thing that we can hang our hats on, the thing that we have absolute resolution in. And I know, I know for gospel that there's tons of us this year that need to hear that. Yeah. yeah. That need to hear that, that the simplicity of what this, what this season represents, what this means, you know? Oh, so, yeah. I totally agree with you guys. Um, I know at least for my life personally, the times where I felt low or the times where I didn't feel close to God is when I took the focus off of the simplicity of what Jesus gives mm -hmm. us and put it on myself right? and mm -hmm. made problems that didn't seem big, huge. Mm -hmm. And I like that you just brought up the point that, that it's simple. It's, it's simple. And that's frustrating sometimes because we think <laughs> life shouldn't be that simple. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, problems happen in our life and we all just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're going to have you're still going to struggle with issues. You're still going to struggle with things that you used to before you were saved and things like that. But knowing that we have that hope and that joy, despite of what we do, is just awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I've had I, I've had, uh, you know, in, in what I do, I God has has blessed me with being somebody that others feel like they can turn to when mm -hmm. in, in discussing things, because I think partially because I've, I've seen so much, but, but knowing that getting a, getting an inside track of the, the struggles and, and the issues and the, the really the stuff and the things of it all that, that some of my brothers and sisters go through, it is a reminder that like it is a giant misnomer if anybody presents themselves or thinks because I used to be this per th this person so I've seen both sides of this fence. Mm -hmm. Christians still struggle all the time, and mm -hmm. as as the church, we can go into a whole conversation about how we need if if we are if we are ministers if we are teachers if we have a voice with our local people friends and family it doesn't matter what what version of this it's not just for us broadcasters it's not just for us pastors it's for every single person that has a sphere a sphere of people around them yeah. that this that this qualifies for you know what i mean and, and yeah. so when when we you, we have to we have to be aware that Every single one of us has our struggles and our issues, but that's that that's the gimmick. That's the hope. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to hear people talk about, you know, I, cause I, I grew up doing the whole Sunday school thing and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I would hear, you know, just let your light shine. Just let it shine. This little light of mine. <laughs> okay. 
that's a real quaint thing that you can put on a Sunday school pamphlet. But like, I'm like, what, what is this? What is this nonsense? Mm. Uh, then I, then I, I realized after I actually have my come to Jesus moment, that thing that separates us, that, that gives us something different. Cause like, like you said, especially for people like us, right? We are all, you know, scholars and theologians here. We are all people who give thought and give purpose behind our actions, how we, how we interact with the gospels, how we interact with doctrine and theology and different things like that. So we could sit here and we can go hours mm -hmm. and hours sure. about, about high level 301, 401, 501 <laughs> level stuff when it comes to this kind of thing, if we wanted to, but that's ultimately that's all window dressing. That's all the trimmings. We get to do that because God has blessed all of us with eyes to see and ears to hear. But none of that guarantees us safe passage. We are going to get beat up. We are going to get hurt. That's going to be the thing, right? Yeah. But that's the thing that separates us is the sound of victory blaring deep down from our spirits. Yeah. Love it. Love, Love it. it back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think the temptation, especially at Christmas time, is to pack it full of stuff too. Oh, like we yeah. were, you know, you especially like when we were younger, you know, we had the school Christmas play and then church had a Christmas play and it's off to these people's house and watching all these movies and listening to all this music. And it's just like we pack it full of stuff. And I've almost found that like I, I love, you know, I love Christmas music. I love all these movies that we've talked about today. Maybe not some of the ones Dan brought up, but uh, most of the movies that, <laughs> <laughs> I most of the movies that we talked about today, <laughs> like I, I love these movies. Like I love, but what I've found is in like now is that I, the slowing down and yeah. the let's just reflect on something. I think I talked about, we're going through our first advent reading and it's been, really good just studying Christmas hymns and these little devotionals related to Christmas hymns and doing that has put me more in the Christmas mood than almost anything else more than decorating and baking and all this other stuff but just these simple like five ten minutes together reading these passages reading these songs and just being together in with God for a little bit that has brought me so much closer to the, that Christmas spirit that we love than anything else this year. It's so interesting that you say that because for me, Advent was always chocolate calendars, the little chocolate candy <laughs> calendar things. Yeah. And like, then you forget about it because in my household growing up, Jesus wasn't like, I mean, it was kind of a thing peripherally, but it wasn't like any kind of personal relationship sort of thing. So it just became about the chocolate. So it wasn't like, <laughs> but like this, this year has been the first year that I have been purposeful about entering into the Advent season and, and exploring that. I've been yeah. camping in Isaiah, the Gospels, and for me, I include Acts in the Gospels because it's like like the sequel, if you will, of, of the Gospels. <laughs> sure. uh, really and then really. and then Revelation. And okay. and just going through different translations, but in those mm. books particular because it's the prophecies of the coming king mm -hmm. and you see a very clear reflection between isaiah and um revelation mm -hmm. and just spending time purposefully sussing out what these different concepts look like not just in a the the hope of the world that came not just mm -hmm. in a the hope that has not yet to come in the the hope that we get to carry around like a precious treasure every single day of our lives. Amen. You know what I mean? And Amen. that is something that has seriously cut through. And I came into this season with every single with every single reason not to not to care and not to Amen. not to want. And that was um, that was the thing, like you said, that really turned the table for me. Awesome. Nice. I'm glad to hear yeah. that, too. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh. So, all right, guys. So, uh, you know, we said we said some of this at Thanksgiving, but it bears repeating again. You know, first off, Merry Christmas. 
May the joy of may the joy of the Lord be with every single one of you. But yeah. seriously, again, yes. thank every single one of you for those of you that that join in and tune in. Otherwise, we would just be nerds talking into a microphone and all of that kind of stuff. I've been I've been in this. I, I think I said this in, in Thanksgiving. I've been in this podcast game for years now, and I've never seen a community rally as quickly as you guys have come around us and i'm just i i still get stunned with how much engagement and how much the interaction there is and stuff like that so seriously thank you guys yes thank you all merry christmas it's been so fun i've had a lot of fun these past few months engaging on social media getting to know all of my co-hosts like this has been great doing this holiday season with you all yeah, and for me, just Merry Christmas, guys. And same with me, just been an honor talking with everyone in this group, as well as just meeting the other hosts. I mean, who knew yeah. that a pandemic could cause us to a lot of people to start podcasting and from all over the states, too. That's just what's mind blowing, which I yeah. mean, I'm from the central time zone, which so I'm an hour behind everybody else. But <laughs> oh, well, I guess it fits me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I and I seriously here's to here's to the here's to the new year. You know, I think for me the way everything's going to land, I think this might be the last time that you guys hear from me this year. Um and so, you know, it's it's been a blast, but also there's so much more to come. Coming down oh, yeah. the pike next year, getting a chance. I've only, I feel like I've only worked with a handful of the hosts, and so getting a chance to work with the rest of the rest of the group. Right. Um, very excited. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So, with that, bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. No, just kidding. Um, I've always <laughs> wanted to just end end a live stream super awkwardly like that. But no, for real. Um, I can follow. Again, no, no, no. <laughs> right, right. So with that, again, Merry Christmas. This has been fun. Drop comments down below. Share with us your favorite uh, modern Christmas movies. And if you have stay tuned to the end, what I want you to do is drop a comment down that says leg lamp. With that, Merry Christmas, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody. This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.